today guys welcome back to the channel today i am going back to casio now i think it's been quite a while since i've featured a casio uh, and or a g-shock uh, but here we go this is a model that i unboxed a while back take a look at that unboxing if you will uh, but this is now the full review so without further ado let's get into it so you know camouflage box in this case which i think is actually appropriate for uh, this model as you will see uh, so you know a bit of a warranty card there module 3266 and look at that user guide it is a fat one but you know it is multilingual so uh, you know the part that you will read if you read it is actually not that thick it's actually really only a, a I think only about a 60 of these mini pages actually so not not a great deal I think uh, so getting into the case here, uh, you've seen G-Shock uh, cases before probably if you're interested in these, so no big deal, it's just kind of a case for the manual at the top there and then the actual tin inside. So you know all the typical features of G-Shock including the water resistance, shock resistance, letting you know when they first invented or, or I guess came up with this particular concept. So again camouflage tin which is appropriate for this camouflage watch. Um, inside here, there's a bit of a instruction about uh, solar. You probably don't need to read this if you're already familiar, but if you're not familiar with uh, the tough solar watches, it's probably worth a gander at this just to have some of the ideas and concepts in mind when you're using the solar watches. So let's just get this out. So without you know uh, showing this too much, that's just the tin. And let's open this up and uh, give you a good look at this particular piece. So guys, this is the Casio G-Shock Frogman GF8250CM. So this is the man in camouflage G, uh, and in this case, it is a blue ocean type of camouflage. Now this model release was in 2015. Uh, I believe the first GF8250 model was actually in 2010. So it's been around for quite a while, uh, but this one is a, a, a relatively more recent release. When it first came out, the, the MSRP, the Japanese MSRP, was actually 48,000 yen. And that translates today to about 440 USD. And that would have been a bargain, I think, to, to pick up at that time. Because right now, uh, I, I think it's very difficult to find this uh, at anywhere much below 600 USD. I was lucky to pick this up secondhand used on eBay and in, in essentially pristine condition so I'm very pleased I got this for well below 600 uh, but links below to whatever products I can find particularly on Amazon uh, if I can find this so guys uh, this model you know the case is actually 49.5 so pretty modest for G-Shock so between there and that point there 49.5 millimeters in size the thickness is 18 millimeters which is again you know, pretty normal for G-Shock. I guess some of the models might be more like 16, but this one's a master of G. So this is 18 millimeters. Uh, the band, where it comes out of the case there, is about 28 millimeters. Now it does taper to about 21 millimeter further down, but right at the case, it actually is more like 28 millimeters. And if you consider a lug to lug, I think you have to say it's there because that's actually where the resin comes off to. That lug to lug there between my fingers is 52 millimeters. So for a, a G-Shock Master of G, this is almost demure. It's really quite modest. Now, weight-wise, it's actually a little bit surprising on the hand. It really does feel more hefty than a lot of G-Shocks uh, of this size, perhaps more so than any G-Shock of this size. 119 grams at the scale. And just as a comparison, I've got here my Mud Master, my GWG 1000, awesome watch. And if you look at it side by side, right, no question, it is a substantially bigger watch, right? This one's a lot more meatier, but weight-wise, it's actually the same. It actually also tips the scales at 119 grams. And that's because this is an all steel case, whereas this one does have plastic on the casing. And that's thanks to the fact that it is really the only ISO 6425 G-Shock series there is the frogman that's what they're famous for so you know let's just show you the screw in case back all right you can see pretty nicely you know it's, it's polished and it's got all those details there i'll just let you kind of have a look at the details you know you can see there 
shock resistant frogmen, you know, the, the water resistant rating, which I, I've mentioned is 200 meters, right? Divers 200 meters, no less, right? Not like other G-Shocks. This is again, the only ISO 6425 diver. Very nice screw in case back, which is actually rare for G-Shocks. There are a number of models, but it, it is actually by far in a way the minority where G-Shock would have a screw in case back because that means that you have to have a steel casing or a metal casing. You know, they do have titanium models. So it has to be a metal casing of some sort. You can't have plastic because of that uh, engagement you need for that screw in case back. So for that, you're getting that 200 meters because you know that's what you need to have that certification that that uh, i guess ability to withstand the iso testing the iso requirements okay the buttons just to show you right just polished plain buttons but they are steel not plastic like in many i guess lower ng shocks they will have plastic buttons these are actually steel buttons and the inner case uh, again as i mentioned is steel and one thing i like about this model is that if you look at the bezel there that part there where it says g-shock divers 200 meters that's actually a steel part that's actually showing under the resin that's one of the strengths of this particular resin case i think and if you do take off this resin case you will see that underneath it's all steel you know as, as we've uh you know explained why that has to be the case it does have this typical shock resistance of g-shock so you know it it's, should be able to withstand a fall from 10 meters and whatnot that's what the g-shocks are uh, i guess all of them do have uh, the display in this case is a straight up lcd nothing too special it's not even a negative display nothing more than that uh and and really the only relief is kind of this gold color uh, circle there for that that circle display there on the roughly 10 o'clock position uh, the el lighting is kind of a blue green uh, so let me see if i can show you that Okay, so that, that EL lighting, electroluminescent lighting, is actually a blue-green there. And you can set it to a auto light, like when you turn your wrist towards your face, you can actually set that to turn on automatically. I've chosen not to because that, that actually does put more demand on the battery. The glass, in, unfortunately, the glass is not sapphire. It is actually just mineral glass, like many G-Shocks, actually. Okay, so that's actually the, the case and description here, you know, blue resin around there, blue writing, and kind of a very dark blue steel there around the, the, the bezel there. Moving on to the caliber, the, the module here, Tough Solar Multifunction Module 3266 is this particular module. So, you know, it does say Tough Solar, um, you know, down the bottom there, right? Tough Solar, full automatic EL lighting and Divers 200 just on the, the top there. And then uh, you know, other things that it will explain on the watch itself. Right? It's got a tie graph and then the top shock resistance. Now this uh, module uh, for the Frogman, uh, the special things it has is the dive timer with surface interval measurement. So it times your dive, you can log your dive time. And then when you stop it, it, it kind of starts timing how much time you have spent between dives because that can be important if you're doing frequent diving. And there are 10 entries on the dive here. So just to explain, this is you know, the base time measurement, right? Uh, there's a second time display. So I've set it just to UTC. So it's actually 4.14 at the moment and 12.14 PM where I am. And you can just change it to the date and day display using the A button there, right? That's just the, the time display. To go into dive log, you hold, hold down this button here Okay, so this is the dive timer. So now it's been stopped, right? I've actually done a dive time and then I've stopped it. And that time that's uh, uh, remaining, uh, that's displayed there is actually the current time. So th this is just a zeroed uh, dive timer. If you want to start diving, you basically start the timer there and it will start counting. The dive timer goes up to 24 hours. I'm not sure if anybody actually ever dives for 24 hours. I, I suspect that's not possible, but it has the capability of timing hours of dive okay so that's really all it looks like now going back to the time display now the first mode you come to is actually the logs okay so just to show you this is the most recent log right this is the previous one and then this is the first one right that time that number there three two one shows you the log and now just going back to the most recent one which is the third one i, I timed it for four minutes 17 seconds uh, and that was 11.50 yesterday. And uh, the time that is displayed there, you can see is actually beeping away. 
blinking away there. 1221, that tells me that I've been on the surface for 12 hours and 21 minutes. So there's been an interval of 12 hours between dives. That tops out at 48 hours. I uh, suspect that that maybe means that you know it's probably not relevant after 48 hours, but that's actually the surface interval time there. Okay, and so there, there are 10 logs. You know, as you see, there's three in there now, but you can go up to 10. So that's the dive log. That's the special feature of this particular watch. Uh, moving on to the next mode, right? The other kind of less common feature is actually the tide and moon graph. So this one is a tide display. So 6th of August at 6 a.m. is you know what it tells you is at high tide. So if you see that graph at the you know I guess the between the 12 and 2 o'clock area of the display, that's the tide graph, and the blinking one is telling you it's high tide at 6. If you flick across, right, go to say 12 o'clock, that's getting towards low tide, right? You can see that blinking part is a low tide. Now that that tide display is able to show you more, uh, I guess, larger fluctuations in tide. Right now, it's a, it's like it's a more flatter tide. So at this time of the moon phase, it's a it's less variation. But you know, uh, in certain times of the moon phase, you're going to get larger variations in tide, and it, it displays it by using more black to the high tide and less black at the low tide. That's that's got some capability there. So that's a tide display. Uh, you know, if you want to show another day, you go into the moon phase. So this is the moon phase showing you it's day 24 of the moon phase with that display day of the moon uh, at that display for the tide and moon. And if I go across 7th, 8th, you know, let's say I want to go to the 15th of August, for example, right? You can see it, the tide is getting stronger and it's going to be day 4 or 3.7 of the moon phase. And if I swap that around to the tide, right, you can see now that's 15th of August and it shows you what the tide is on that day. So that's how you would basically change it. Okay, so moving on, world time setting. Now with this world time, uh, there is uh, the usual, fairly typical 48 different cities with uh, UTC included for 31 time zones. And as you flick across the cities, you can see that little display at the in the circle there actually kind of flicks across to roughly indicate what time of the day it is. So for example, um, you know, Kabul, Delhi, you know, 9.54 is kind of roughly indicating the time uh, at that place. So, you know, I'm not going to go into this too much. It's really the 48 city option here. Moving on next, you're getting right five daily alarms and the snooze alarm as well as the time signal option. This is very similar to many other G-Shocks. I don't have to really go into this, I think, uh, but there's an there's a, a option for five daily alarms just to let you hear it. Okay, typical alarm sound, not very loud, probably using for reminders rather than waking you up from sleep. Uh, certainly, it doesn't actually wake me up from deep sleep uh, by any means. Okay, stopwatch. The stopwatch is one one hundredth of a second, as you see there. 24 hour capability with the split function and lap time. Okay, so that's all that is. Very fairly standard. Timer, 24 hour timer, one second countdown. Nothing more special than that, really, you know, but you know, there's the function there. And that's back to the the time module. Um, so uh, the battery life in this with the Tough Solar is rated at 10 months uh, on usual function uh, without any further exposure to light. So it can actually last 10 months if you were in complete darkness without any lighting and you were still using the watch. Uh, it actually standbys for 27 months on power save. So power save mode turns off the display when it hasn't been in light for some amount of time uh, to actually just use very little power. So 27 months on power saving is pretty phenomenal, you know, more than two years on power save function. And it does have a power indicator. So if you look at the bottom there, it's got H. It, it, across there it will be low, medium, high. So it's under high at the moment. So it's nicely charged. Okay, so moving on to the band. Uh, you know, typical resin G-Shock band, nothing more to say really, camouflage ocean blue. Uh, the only thing to add uh, for the Master of G uh, would be that it's got a metal keeper, right? It's got a metal 
uh, steel buckle there, but it's also got a steel keeper for this uh, level of uh, G-Shock. Uh, and then, of course, you can see it's got double prong rather than just a single prong. All right, so let's just try it on for the wrist shot now. And there we have the Casio GF8250CM camouflage blue on my 17 centimeter wrist. So remember, that's 52 millimeter on lug to lug there. That's obviously going to make it a bit bigger. And so it does look large, right? It's a very casual sport large watch. But, you know, I think this one is pretty modest for a Master of G. That's how it looks like on my wrist there. So guys, what's been my enjoyment of this? Why did I get this? Well, it is a very famous model, right? The, the frogmen are very famous, right? This one's probably not the absolute most favorite, uh, but it does have certain features that I like. Um, so, it, you know, the frogmen, it, it's really the only ISO 6425 G-Shock series, really cool steel case, very nice looking steel case back there. You know, I really enjoy looking at that case back. It's got a wide range of use specific features. So particularly the dive log and dive timer, as well as time and tide are useful for people who are, you know, in, in water sports, water situation. And also particularly if you specifically go scuba diving, wrapped up in a very nice tough package, which is, you know, what G-Shock is famous for along with the solar so I, I think this is one of the early solar models for frogman it's not the first one the first one i believe was the gw200 uh, but this is i think the next one you know all the current ones of course are also tough solar uh, but i like this particular package now what's the differences between this capability and something later well the gwf1000 which is the next model adds atomic time sync that's really what it mainly adds Whereas the latest one, the current one, uh, which is GWFD1000, adds triple sensor with a, a depth meter using the barometer. Rather than giving you barometer rating, it uses it to give you a depth meter. So that, that's what the, the later ones add. But those do seem to use more power. And that comes up in the, the battery rating. So this one, you know, 10 months on usual uh, use, whereas the, the GWF-1000 rated at eight months on usual use. And then if you go, go up to the D-1000, the depth uh, meter one, it's rated at seven months. And then when you, you look at the, the standby life, that's actually also shorter. So, you know, I, I think I like this one because it does seem to be a bit more gentle on the battery. Yes, it doesn't have the sensors, but you know, if you don't, aren't particular fussed about having sensors, you don't worry about atomic time sync, this perhaps is a better choice and you know, maybe the choice for you. I mean, the other thing is that it's obviously also more compact. It is a smaller watch and it also shows more of the steel bezel, right? That, and that's something that some people like about this particular resin case design, that the steel bezel shows more and that's something you can appreciate as opposed to just seeing uh, resin all the way around. Okay, what's been the weaknesses? You know, what, what might people not like about this? Well. You know, it, it is actually big and it's a casual, cool style, right? And that's fine. That's what this watch is. You're not going to use this for anything more except absolutely casual situations. Not even smart casual. You should technically be wearing a watch like this. But, you know, I really enjoy this really for, for all the casual, rough situations. It will stand up, of course. And it's it's really just got that cool asymmetric case design, which, you know, makes people question you. Well, what is that watch? Okay, now, uh, anything else? Well, no sensors, no atomic time sync. So if those are important features for you, uh, this won't be the watch for you. It does have the tough solar and that is good enough for me. So guys, that's the watch. That's the G-Shock Divers 200 meter Casio GF8250 Camouflage Blue. Let me know what you think of the G-Shock Frogman and I'm very interested to hear. This is the first one I've reviewed and they are so well known, so famous uh, and probably the most famous of all Master of Gs. Guys, if you enjoy my channel, do consider subscribing. New content weekly, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me and as always, I'll catch you next time.